A short while ago, as I was thinking of this morning and what I was going to say to you, I chose the title, Our Doubts. We heard the gospel lesson about Thomas and his doubts, and I focus on our doubts today, yours and mine. Now, there's something interesting about Thomas's doubts and about our doubts, not focusing exactly on doubts as to what exactly happened to Jesus, but our doubts about things in general, especially our doubts about what we may be called upon to do, doubts about how capable we may be to face whatever that is, any move, any new job, a new community, a new country. Or perhaps I could have attached the title, Some Thoughts for a Church in Transition. Let us pray. God, give us a clear vision of the truth. Faith in your power and confident assurance of your love. Amen. Bill Broadhurst may be a name that is unfamiliar to you. He was a runner, but he had a disability. When he was young, he suffered an aneurysm that left him partially paralyzed. So he struggled to learn to walk then to jog, and finally, he was able to run, to actually run. Now, he had a hero. The hero's name was Bill Rogers, a name you may have heard. Bill Rogers was a, a champion runner back in the 70s and 80s. So it was in 1981 that Broadhurst heard that Rogers was coming to Omaha, Nebraska to run in a 10K race. <clears throat> All his life, he had dreamed about running in a race with his hero, Bill Rogers. So he entered the race. And he started off with the pack, but very soon, he was falling very far behind. I'm not supposed to run anymore. I, I can walk. Not supposed to run. But when I was running, I always had three goals. And the first was to survive, to still be living at the end of the day, because I knew uh, what would be coming from my wife if I did not survive. <laughs> The second was to just cover the distance, to get there one way or another. The third goal was not to be last, but to be able to finish somewhere in the middle of the pack. So Broadhurst likely had some goal that was like that, but pretty soon he was trailing so badly that eventually all the other runners were out of sight. But he continued, he began to wonder if he had taken on too much of a challenge, but he continued on, his mind and body telling him to quit, but determined to go on. Well, the race was obviously over, the police had gone home, Traffic was whizzing by, and he had to take to the sidewalk. But people began to notice him and began to shout, go on, you can make it. And eventually, Broadhurst was within sight of the finish line. Of course, the banner had been removed. The crowd had thinned out. And then, within 10 meters of the finish line, there was Bill Rogers, his hero, wearing his gold medal. Finally, Broadhurst crossed the line and 
into the arms of his hero. When he could stand again, Bill Rogers took his gold medal and ribbon from around his own neck and put it on Broadhurst saying, Broadhurst, you're the real winner. Take the gold. It's a touching story, a story of painful perseverance in the midst of the most devastating temptation of all, the most devastating temptation that anyone can face, the temptation to quit. It's easy to quit. It takes a lot of effort to do some things, but no effort at all to quit, to give up. There are two kinds of people, those who quit and those who don't. Those who don't are the real winners in the struggle of life. During World War II, Winston Churchill was responsible for many great quotations, but one of his quotations that helped to spur on and encourage the people of Great Britain was simply the three word, never give up. Never give up, he said. And it was that sort of encouragement that carried the British people through that terrible war. In the Bible, we read of people who, who gave up on God. John 6, uh, from that time on, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And even sadder, I think, is Paul's statement about a co-worker, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Those are words that perhaps we might all hear in our time of temptation. There have always been voices of discouragement. Certainly in the church, we can hear them. But there are great examples in the church too. I'm sure you have seen some great examples of perseverance. I still remember in my days in Petticodiac, Alice Church, well into her 90s, coming to the annual anniversary service in Church Hill. That's out just past Elgin. And I remember her climbing up a steep bank from the road to the door, but she just wouldn't give up. Such examples, and I'm sure you've seen them, they help us to resist the temptation to quit. And can't you hear the dialogue as they face their creator? I have finished the work that you gave me to do. And the reply, well done, good and faithful servant we too can claim that promise. And we have the word also, let us not be weary. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So keep on keeping on. God has promised that you will succeed if you do not quit, take hold of the promise and never give up. Now, what I have said you could take as individuals in your particular situation, but it's also for you as a church, a church in this stage of transition. And perhaps a final word that I would leave you with is from the Proverbs. Fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God bless you in the days ahead 
as you face a great choice that has to be made. Amen.